welcome everybody and good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Andy, I'm one of the ministers here at the church and you are especially welcome this evening to join with us for our Christmas Eve service. Over the next hour we're just going to be spending some time thinking about the true meaning of Christmas, slowing down, reflecting a little bit on that true meaning and our lives and allowing God to speak to us. Hope that you find it a really helpful time. I'm going to ask Ruth to pray for us now before we start. Uh, we've got our candles, our four Advent candles, and we're going to pray uh, and then we're going to worship God together for this next hour. Ruth, would you pray? Dear Lord, I thank you that you are King. I thank you that we can come together, even though we are apart, to worship you this evening, to remember the birth of your son. I pray that you will be in each home represented here this evening. Lord, may each of us feel your presence in a real tangible way as we gather, maybe, maybe on our own, maybe with um, two or three others. May we feel the whole presence of your angels worshipping with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 2, 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby, wrapped in cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20.
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh, birthed from the eternal, heaven touching earth. This messenger, the beacon of hope, the light of the world, some called him prophet, teacher, counselor, prince of peace, the everlasting sent to this earth, not from natural descent or human decision, but born of God. The greatest gift ever given the moment he stepped into the world. Not as a giant, not so unreachable, but as a child, a man. This birth, the origin of the greatest story ever told. This very moment will change the course of eternity forever turning the tables, his mission to light the way, to restore the broken, to disrupt the course of all mankind, to restore our fractured nature, to become the saviour of all, not once, but once for all time, for every man, woman and child, from the beginning to the very end, to restore the connection between God and his beloved children that all might come and all might know. Emmanuel, God with us. Good evening, everyone. We're going to pray together now, and this litany is a response prayer. Each time I say, Holy God, would you please respond with, hear our prayer. Let's pray. In peace, let us pray for the church and the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. Creator God, on this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. There was no room for your son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. Mary, in the pain of labour, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain and distress. Holy God, hear our prayer. Your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Holy God, hear our prayer. The angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. Shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's love. Holy God, hear our prayer. Strangers found the Holy Family and saw the baby lying in a manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. In this holy night, Heaven has come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, hear our prayer. Holy God, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary and Joseph, and through, who, and through him, who is your word, made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi everyone. Each year, as a church, we decide to take up a Christmas offering to give to a deserving local charity that can do some great work within the community. This year, we have decided uh, to join with Food Bank, 
to try to give them a generous gift to further the work that they do. This year has been a year where we have partnered more closely with Food Bank, helping the eight great uh, St Peter's wide uh, collections to take place where loads of food has come in and many have been helped. But we'd like to do just a little more. So please give generously to Food Bank this Christmas uh, and we will be enabling this to happen in three ways. Firstly, you can make a bank transfer to our account as a church. Uh, the details should be here on the screen. Or you can click the link in the comments box, which you'll be able to see right now, uh, which will take you through to our software where you can make a donation. Or thirdly, if you'd like to bring an envelope in marked for the Christmas offering in the new year, uh, that would be really helpful. First week of January, our doors will be open and you can bring that in then. Let's make a real difference in people's lives. Those who have a little less, let's give them a little more at this time. We know many are struggling and many are in need. Let's step up using that great Christian principle of generosity and giving and enable those to do a bit better at this difficult time. Bless you all.
the government commanded all return to their place of birth they could have done without it as mary was near full term but they knew they had no choice but to return So this evening I want to talk a little bit about hope. Hope is a really important thing to us. As people we need hope to continue don't we? And hope seems to be a theme of Christmas and I'm going to explain why. Let me start with a story. In 1952 there was a swimmer called Florence Chadwick who attempted to swim the English Channel. There was nothing new to long distance swimming for her, she had uh, swum uh, many long distances before. But the day that she chose to swim the channel was a cold day and there was a fog. And this fog was so thick that she could hardly see the safety boats around her. She swam for several hours before finally she decided that there was no hope of reaching the other side, to reaching France, and she was asked to be taken out of the water. After her swim, she came to know that she had come within half a mile of the French coast. But because the fog was so thick, she just couldn't see it. She felt worse, she felt exhausted, she decided that there wasn't any hope, so she gave up. If she could have seen the coast, surely she could have found the strength to carry on and make it and complete her challenge. We need hope. We need to see the big perspective and we need that to be able to carry on. It's a really important part of who it is as, as we are human beings, as we are people. If we don't have hope, we can give up too soon. And the reality may not be so. There can be an answer to the problem, but we just can't see it. We sometimes say we can't see the wood for the trees, don't we? The world is longing for hope. Everyone 
everywhere is searching for hope. Hope for peace, hope for a better life, hope for freedom, hope to see an end to a bad situation like the current crisis. Where can we find it? Who can give us hope? The truth is only God can give us true hope. All our human hopes tend to be just wishful thinking because only the one who is in control of all things can give us lasting hope. God can give us hope. Many pray when disaster strikes because somehow they want to believe that God can help. They do not know who he is, but they pray. How can we trust a God who we cannot see? The reality is we will struggle. And that is the reason why Jesus must come. God allows us to see him when Jesus Christ was born. We could see God. And in seeing God, we could find true hope. John 3, 16 and 17, reading from the New Living Translation, says this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. So God had a great plan. There is more to life than what we are seeing. Do you know that? God has a great plan for us. We are made to have a relationship with him. And God did not send Jesus into the world to judge the world. He came to save us. His coming at Christmas more than 2,000 years ago isn't a myth and it isn't a legend. It is not accidental and it is not. By chance. God planned it in detail. It happened to be on a specific day in history, at a specific place, at a specific time. And do you know when that time was? Because it didn't start at Christmas. We've heard some of the story in our two readings this evening from Luke 2, which are really familiar and so famous. But let us take a slightly wider look at this story, the big picture, this incredible plan of God. Because it started way back, right after God created the world. It began in the Garden of Eden. It, and we can read about it in the book of Genesis. When the first man and woman disobeyed God and sinned against him, man's relationship with God was broken. But God did not give up on mankind. He announces a plan of salvation in Genesis 3, 14 and 15. It's 4,000 odd years ago. And the Lord said to Satan, who was represented in, in this part of the Bible by a serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and will eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring uh, and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And so God reveals his great rescue plan. And this plan is centred on a specific person, a man, the offspring of a woman. And he will enter the human race being born of Mary. And he will do battle with Satan, the one who tempted man to disobey God. But Satan can only strike his heel. That's it. He cannot defeat him. And this man will defeat Satan and his power. He will crush his head. This saviour will not be an angel. He will enter this world born of a woman as we read in Galatians 4.4, 4, but when the time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman. This is the hope for mankind. God will send someone to save us from our sin and reconcile mankind back to himself. But who is he? How and where will he come? So let me tell you a little bit more 
about this great plan of God. God unfolded his plan gradually over the centuries, over centuries and centuries. And we won't be able to go into all the details about that in this sermon. But history reveals to us that God first called a man named Abraham, a righteous man who sought God and through him, God set up the nation Israel. Through this nation, a family line was created and chosen and the saviour was to be born of this line. Now let us fast track through history a little bit to the time of King David of Israel. At the height of David's career, God made a promise to him through the prophet Nathan in 2 Samuel 7, uh, a thousand years before the first Christmas. And 2 Samuel 7 from verse 11 teaches us about this great promise. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. So the plan, God's plan, is getting more specific. The saviour comes from the line of David. And when we look at the genealogies recorded in Matthew 1 and Luke 3, we can trace the Saviour back to the house of David. And this house and kingdom and throne will last forever, God says. This Saviour is no ordinary human ruler or king. He reigns and lives forever. Who can do that? I don't know if David fully understands the full meaning of this at this time. God's plan gets even more specific over time. It gets clearer and more precise. So by now, we know he is going to come as a man from a nation called Israel and into the family line of King David. Who is this person that God says will rescue us from sin and Satan's control? Let's jump to the times of the prophets, which are 700 years before Christmas. Isaiah 7, 13 and 14 says... Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. So God narrows it down further. His plan is through a virgin birth. And this man will come from the house of David and from a virgin. So this saviour will not be an ordinary man. His entrance is going to be supernatural. He is sent by God, comes through a virgin birth, conceived of the Holy Spirit. He is not just human. He is divine. He is the son of God. And we can call him Emmanuel, meaning in Hebrew, God with us. And we find out where specifically this man is to be born. As we look at Micah 2, repeated in Matthew 2, we can see uh, that it says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. This saviour whose origins are from old, from ancient times, will be born in Bethlehem. So who could fit all these descriptions? This saviour is to come from someone, born of a woman, well, that's everyone, into the nation Israel, a Jewish man, that fits millions. From the tribe of Judah, well, that reduces the number somewhat. And a descendant of David. That's fewer still. Being born in Bethlehem. So now we're narrowing it down to just a handful. But here's the clincher. Born of a virgin. That is only one. Only one person in history has ever met this sixth description. Born of a virgin. And his name is Jesus. 
The arrival of Jesus is a plan of God. His salvation plan for mankind. Christmas is not a random event, not an uh, accident of history. God planned every detail from the beginning with meticulous planning. Every human being longs for some kind of saviour, a saviour of some type. We look for someone or something that can solve our problems, ease our pain, give us happiness, give us joy. Only God can give us these things. Jesus Christ is our saviour and we need to put our trust in him. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Jesus sacrificed his life and paid the price for our sin. Believe that today and our sin will be forgiven and we will be reconciled with God. If God orchestrated everything throughout this long history to accomplish this salvation for your good, then we have no reason to doubt him today. God loves you. He loves you very much and he really cares for you. He knows your needs and he wants to help you. Open your heart to him and pray. So let's return back to the theme of hope. As we look to the amazing specific details of the birth of Jesus, born in such humble circumstances 2,000 years ago, we can see an incredible story of love, restoration, and amazing hope. For this was a plan to give us true hope, hope of eternal life, a promise to be with God forever. We may have problems, we may feel exhausted, we may feel angry, anxious, we may feel defeated at times, that we can't go on. But let's not give up swimming, like in my original story. Let's ask God to give us his hopeful perspective. And when we see it, we will be full of hope. If you're a little low on hope right now, yeah, look to the big picture. God, who is so powerful, so loving, and so absolutely on your side, is there for you. And he wants the very best for you. So this Christmas, look to him, rejoice in him and in his coming, in that first coming and in hopeful expectation of the second coming. As we live in this perpetual advent, let's receive him with thanksgiving, with gratitude. And let's find hope and light in the darkness of our times that comes only from him who can rescue you fully. Let's trust in God. Let's be full of hope. Let's be full of expectancy. And let's rejoice this Christmas time. In Jesus' name we hope. Amen. Welcome in this Christmas Eve service to our prayers from our kitchen. It's always going to start by leading us in prayer. This is a prayer written by Sheridan Voisey. Lord God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your love and release my insecurity. I receive your joy and release my unhappiness. I receive your peace and release my anxiety. I receive your patience and release my impulsiveness. I receive your goodness and release my indifference. I receive your goodness and release my ungodliness. I receive your faithfulness and release my disloyalty. I receive your gentleness and release my severity. I receive your self-control and release my self-indulgence. Amen. Amen. 
Emmanuel, God with us, show us where you may be found tonight, in each human birth, in family joy, in relentless tragedy, in treasured babes and homeless families. We especially hold before God those we love, but we can't see this Christmas. Emmanuel, we rejoice that you are with us in everything, through everything. Lord Christ, be born in us today. Word of God, become flesh in us, that we might live your gospel. Light of the world, shine in us and through us for the sake of your world. We hold before God those who've lost loved ones, this year who were part of our church family. Especially we pray for Michael Grimer, Dorothy Hadley and Eileen Quartius. Loving God, help us to see your grace, to hear your voice and follow in your way. And tonight of all nights, we pray for a deep sense of anticipation in our hearts as we await the Christ child. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come now to share in bread and wine together. I'm going to read some familiar words as we prepare to share. So come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love God and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Zoe, if you could just uh, give thanks for the bread and the wine before we share it together. Father, we thank you for the bread and the reminder of your body that was broken for us on the cross. And Father, we thank you for the wine and the reminder of your blood that was shed for each and every one of us. Help us as we come to this time now just to be thankful and to remember, Lord, what you've given to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So we remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. So the body of Christ broken for you, received with thanksgiving. Mark the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And after supper he took the cup, representing the blood of the new covenant, of the new agreement, that the way has been made for us to be reconciled to God. So we drink the blood of Christ, sorry, the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of your sins. Mark the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen.
Let's pray together. Living God, may the bread and wine just shared deepen our love for you. May the worship we have shared this Christmas lead to acts of service which transform people's lives. May the carols we have sung this Christmas help others to sing, even in their sadness. May the gifts we have exchanged this Christmas deepen our spirit of giving throughout the year. And may the candles that we light this Christmas remind us that you intend no one to live in darkness. May the people that we meet this Christmas remind us that we meet you in our neighbours. May the gathering together of family and friends this Christmas, whether in person or online, make us appreciate anew the gift of loved ones. And may the stories we have told again this Christmas be good news of great joy to us and all people on our lips and in our lives. And may the ways you have come close to us this Christmas not be forgotten, but hidden in our memories, be a rich resource to lift us when times are painful and humble us when things go well. For you are our life, our light and our salvation this season and always because of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shining, it is the night of our dear.
So thank you so much for joining us this holy night. And we really hope that you have a great Christmas. Even if you can't meet with those who you particularly want to, even if you are feeling that isolation that many are, we pray that you will know the presence of God. So let us pray together to close. Lord God, we pray your blessing upon us this holy night. May we know your presence, your closeness, your hope, your peace and your joy. Thank you, Jesus, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And we rejoice in that fact. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Christmas to you all. Please do join us uh, in the morning at 10 o'clock for our fun morning service that will be full of fun and full of meaning. It'd be great if you would join us then. And there will be the opportunity to join together with Zoom coffee straight afterwards. And please can I remind you about our Christmas offering. The details will be in the chat box right now. But for now, Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas.